Oh, I was going to take you for a walkthrough. So, let's start at the beginning. Yeah, I took everything apart. It's always going backwards. Two steps forward, going backwards. I'm working on the deck beaming. This is a 2x4 where I use the arc template. This bulk is left because I ended up coming across this cool little antique handle. So I'm going to arrange rope steering. As you see, I have this nice antique whatever it used to be, but I had it around for years and didn't have the heart to throw it out. So perfect to sit there as a footboard. It's pretty solid. And actually the deck gets most of its strength from the cross beam that sits on top. So there's the plate for the back of the uh, steering wheel. And I backed it with one inch mahogany. So, and you may not find such a beautiful little um, beastie. Uh, you could make something, make your own wheel. Yeah, so there's the wheel wrenched on nice and tight. Initially, I wasn't going to have a forward helm at all because uh, I was just going to have a stool by the entryway to step in out of the rain. But the, the, the thing is, this came across my path central here. That then is, is much better. It's a pretty old beast, I think. And I thought, oh, that would look cool on the boat. And it, and it really does, doesn't it? Fitting the deck with some styrofoam. Uh, for added strength down the middle, it's 3 8 thick. And that'll stiffen where you walk. This is exterior grade. Work, work is continuing. You can see there's insulation. Today though is a good day because I'm getting back to putting things back in place. Easiest to mark these when the frame was on, cut them to shape. I did that when I had everything dry fitted. A new style, Art Deco uh, boat design. No, just clamps. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I got the back panels on. I have the front deck on. Uh, I used along the side here, uh, exterior uh, construction adhesive. I'm trying to limit the amount of glue, uh, sorry, the amount of screws I'm using. Uh, so you see all these wedges here, that's because this is just all glued. I've weighed this down with a dehumidifier, two batteries, and my clamp pail, which I've taken a lot of clamps out of there, but, um, and then I've just screwed around the edges. So you can see underneath, that's how this all looks. That insulation will help keep the cabin a little bit cooler in the beating sun and warmer. My art. Every one of my boats uh, should have a little bit of art in it. So there's the back all, all looking pretty hot. Tomorrow evening I'm looking at being in, in a, a happy mood. Uh, this is a nice transition. I was bit bummed because when I dry fit everything, everything has to come all apart. But now it is all back together for the most part permanent. It's looking really nice. Uh, I do have to replace these drywall screws. That's just to bed this, but it's on pretty tight. Um, so let's just take a walk around. I cleaned up a little bit. Don't expect too much of me. <laughs> and um, so the roof beams are all glued. I'm going to have to come back and clean out some of the construction adhesive. And my experience with PL Premium is that it is very, very strong and lasts really well, but it's a bit of a mess. So let's come into the back and you can see through. So some hatches to do. And initially I wasn't going to do an inside helm as far as a steering wheel goes, but I've changed my mind. Oh, this is kind of nice. That folds right open to there. Yeah, I got a, another coat of epoxy on the floor and things are a little bit neat and tidy here. Oops, a bit of dried varnish. I got to watch that on the counter. So this is the look. And I'm standing where there will be a hatch. So you will be able to stand full. The only place you won't be able to stand full height is right in the middle here. So while you're getting to your seat, you just have to duck and get to your seat. If this hatch is open up in the front here, it will open up over to the side. Um, you'll be able to stand full height. So I can make a rope steering that I can stand here and I'm probably going to have like a little uh, safety rope slash cable that uh, kills the motor if I see I'm running into something. 
because in the shallows, I'll turn the motor on real slow and we'll wind our way through things. And then if I see something, I can kill the motor and jump out and grab a, uh, a long uh, paddleboard paddle and scull my way through. And here's the door. It opens nicely off to the side. And I'm really pleased how that worked out. I've left for weather strips, so there's a little bit of play there. But this is all part of the construction to avoid any structure under here. So that if you want, this whole area can be made into a full queen board. The back cushions on the, on the couch will come and fill, fill this gap here. So the idea here is that all this structure, you can see the framing continues across. So it's a top beam, box beam effect. Yeah, so I'm really excited. This is a nice stage because now I can get back into dry fitting again, but it's going to be the roof. And as I said, the glue has to be cleaned out. So this, this stool now makes the center aisle a beautiful seat. I can sit up here. This is actually going to be a pretty awesome boat when it's all said and done. So yeah, very pleased. Roof, roof all framed in, looking rather good. You have five foot uh, headroom here. So actually five foot, five foot, uh, one inch. So 61 inches under the center beam and 62 and a half under the, uh, under the roof. So say 62. So my goal here is to try to keep everything just under seven feet. 18 inches is what the bed of the trailer has to sit at to sneak under into a garage. Oh, I was going to take you for a walkthrough. So. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, my idea in a camper, again, you'd have just a double step. Very good. So on land, again, with a low bed trailer, this is about where it will sit. So with a double step motor, you don't need it. When you're camping in camp mode, it can stay in the trunk of the car. Oh, close the door. So you get up on the step is my point. So, you know, you're in camp mode. You step up, you step through, open your door. And um, I, I like just using a curtain for the uh, bathroom. So I picture a curtain hooked across here that you can take it and close off the whole back aisle. And that way you have the sink, composting toilet and or a small porta potty will fit there as well. So yeah, let's just go through and you're walking through. Oh, I didn't have this door closed to get the full effect. Okay, so door is... I love these uh, screen door handles. I think this is a real boon for uh, homemade boat builders or people who are building their own little cabin boats because this is a cheap aluminum option. And I cut down the handle on the back side so that it looks a bit custom as well. And they're lockable. You can lock it over here. And now you can't get it open. Uh, so you can lock the interior. I chose the key set for the back door because that will be used most in camp mode. So yeah, so you spring your door open. And you get yourself up. And now this is in higher mode, but the front deck is very solid. And uh, so it's big enough that you could set up a couple chairs. And that's why I plan to have the hatch open and seat right here so that the hatch becomes a little tray for your fishing gear and so forth. There'll be a, a drop door like Osprey has uh, to step to shore when you're in boat mode. But yeah, how's this look? Pretty freaking cool in my humble opinion. But just to give you an idea, with the door closed, how beautiful is that? And I used ga enameled gate hardware. And uh, yeah, how pretty. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm so thrilled. It's been a good day. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I'll be putting on the roof panels, working out the hatches. Still lots to do. So this steering wheel is going to be so cool. Just to be able to stand right here 
look down on the water ahead of you. That's the beauty of our Deanne's Rose, is we cruise in areas, I'm just about to uh, bring on a couple videos where, uh, well, the second one that I'm, I have in the works right now, I have to edit, is showing our Deanne's Rose going through some rocky channels. I'm freaking D out quite a bit. And I apologize to her, but she has to tolerate. Worst case scenario, we bump a rock, I jump out and I push us off or drag us through or whatever. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pushing my luck. But the beauty of it is that I can stand forward and look down in the water and swing the tail of the boat so that the prop clears the boulders and so forth. And, and, and I, I have a pretty good feel of my boat, so I'm able to do it. And we get to some pretty cool places doing that. So Mini D will certainly be that type of boat. The head is looking really good. I have been using it. Oh, prepare. <laughs> and I'm experimenting with ash and sawdust mix. So they kind of drain the bogs and then mine the peat moss. And the peat moss and sawdust is like really, really good. No smell, no nothing. Um, the ash is a little tricky. One, maybe maybe there's still a coal burning, but you let it, let it uh, cool for a long time. And then um, you mix it up and it's a little dustier to deal with. But um, if you're careful and drop it in and close the lid, it should work. Oh, uh, some of the de detailing. I, I had a bunch of brass slot screws and I thought, okay, let's make use of them. And they're very beautiful. That adds some attractiveness, I think. Just It's a, just a subtle detail that will look really, really nice. And same on the front. So did I go all the way through? I did not go all the way through. What was I thinking? Let's Let's go through all the way. And by all the way through, I meant all the way through. Oh, I got my camera. Normally I just put my hand on the posts and jump down. <laughs> but I had one hand that I couldn't put on the posts. That makes everything awkward. This box beam concept has turned out super strong. And, you know, that seems like such a small little compartment to put things. But what it is, is it's rigidity. Oh gosh, I could just stare at this, but it's time I get on and clean up and do some other things today. Woohoo!